Hey everybody, this is Tyler Tapper coming at you today with another knife build. So I've had this old cactus skeleton sitting around for probably seven or eight years. I got a chance to go on a trip to where I grew up, Santa Fe, New Mexico, a while back. And while I was there, I decided to visit my old house and kind of go check out the Arroyo that I used to play in when I was a little kid. One of the little souvenirs I brought back with me were a bunch of these cactus skeletons. I got three or four of them. I figured I'd do something cool with them and I just let them sit on a shelf for, yeah, forever for probably seven or eight years before I touched them. So for a while I had had the idea that I was going to make a knife hilt out of one of these. As you can see, they're far too brittle on their own to really just glue straight on there. In fact, even when I was cutting through there, I had to glue it back together right here. So I figured what I would do is I would cut them in two pieces and then I would attach it down onto some sort of substrate and then pour some clear epoxy over it. So after that piece got reattached and had a little bit of time to dry, I put it in a vise here. I didn't really clamp it very tight and I'm sure there's a better way I could have used to cut this up, but just going after it with a handsaw, getting into two roughly equal pieces. After I got into these two pieces, the next thing I gotta do is take it over the belt sander and get it flat so it has a good surface to attach to the substrate. So off the camera I got these little pieces of red heart cut out. There's really thin thin pieces of it, marking out all the holes and the general shape on it. Since I was going to use clear epoxy, I uh, wanted to have the wood that would really stand out through the little crevices of it. So after all that was cut out and everything was ready to put together, I needed to have some way to join the Choya and the Red Heart um, just while I wrapped it up and poured the epoxy in. So I'm using a little bit of five minute epoxy. Off camera, I wrapped those in some electrical tape to clamp them together. It's pretty nice because you can apply however much force you want to it with how much you stretch the electrical tape around it. So it's a really good temporary clamp to just put on there while something dries. So after everything was all put together, it was time for me to decide how exactly I wanted these all shaped. I did end up thinning out the red heart more and then I'm just kind of profiling the top here. I did want to play with a little bit, leaving some of just the really weathered natural look on top of there and then contrasting it with how light it got when I did sand on it. So I didn't want to go too deep through it, um, but I did want to make them pretty uniformly shaped on both sides of it. So after I got those parts in the shapes I wanted, I went back with some of this aluminum foil tape and I'm basically just making little bowls for the epoxy to sit in. If I tried to pour the epoxy straight on top of that, it would just go all over the sides. It would take 20 coats to build it up to the thickness I needed, so this is just kind of a shortcut way to do it. So I'm mixing up the epoxy that I always use. It's called Max CLR. It's usually used for composite work and just kind of pouring them right into the bowls here and making sure it's saturating through everything. There's always something really satisfying about going back and popping all the bubbles with the torch. So you probably don't want to do this on your kitchen table. Inevitably some of it always finds some crack to leak out of and stick on there. If you, I tried to do it pretty quickly because the tape comes off a little quicker, but I ended up just abandoning that and going and grinding off the rest of the tape. So now it's time to get them attached onto the knife here. I drilled the uh, holes through one side of the 
of the scale and then I'm coming over and drilling back through the other direction on that just so everything is centered and lined up exactly where I want it. So coming back with a little bit of that DevCon 5 minute epoxy and getting on the scales and putting them together, getting them all clamped up. I did this a little bit out of order. I'm using these uh, drill bits just to keep the scales where they need to be because I don't have the brass rod that I was going to use yet. So after a quick trip to the hardware store, I got the right stuff that I wanted and get some hollow stuff. I figured it fit the knife a little bit better being able to see all the way through than having a solid pin. Figuring out the thickness I need, marking it out, and I'm going to cut it. I end up using a brake line cutting tool. Um, seems like whenever I use a saw or a snips or something like that, I end up goobering up the ends a little bit. Um, this does flare them in a little bit, so just cut a little bit extra so you can grind it off. Then of course we just have some more epoxy and some more gluing. I did end up screwing a screw into the end of that hollow brass tube, so I had a little bit of a handle to put them in there with. After those had had overnight to cure, back over to the belt sander to get them back flush with the rest of it. And I'm going to switch out the belt for a little bit finer of a grip belt. Uh, I'm going to do the final shaping of how I want the knife handle to sit with this. Using this final grit just meant a little bit less hand sanding that I would have to do at the end. There was one spot that couldn't quite get in there with the belt sander so I got out the hand file to just get that first finger hole. While I had the hand file out, I figured I'd go over the whole thing once just to get all of the big scratch marks out from the sander. And then I was on to quite a bit of hand sanding with it. I had to work all the way up through the grits. I basically had to polish that epoxy so I could uh, use the final finish I wanted to on it. So I went up, I started with about 80 grit and got all the way up through, it looks like 600 grit for the first pass. It's pretty funny all the little things they pick up on, like blowing it off and then she had seen me licking my finger and licking it just to kind of see what it would look like when it was done, so she thought that was pretty cool to make it shiny. So this was roughly what it looked like after all the sanding and then I used a bunch of coats of wipe on poly. I probably did about six coats in all and then I did some sanding in between the coats uh, to just get it exactly how I wanted it. Looking back it probably would have been easier to go and use a two part clear coat like an automotive paint for. So this one was really a lot of fun to do. I'd had that wood sitting there for forever and I had stuff rolling around in my mind with what to do with it. I'm glad I didn't sand it down any flatter than I did because I do really like seeing that weathered wood sticking through there along with that freshly sanded stuff. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this. If you have any questions or comments or anything, please leave them down below. If you liked what you saw, I have a bunch of other videos you guys can check out. Please subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.